I'm Kristen, and today I'm going to be talking about the worst quilt I have ever made. I will show it to you in a bit. Um, there's kind of two ways it came about. Um, one, some of you know, I've been trying to clear some of my unfinished quilt projects, my whips, my UFOs. So I decided to do an orphan block quilt. It's meant to be kind of quick and easy. Um, and I started kind of laboring over it a little bit more than I probably should have. Uh, and then in the midst of all that, um, without going into it too much, basically, um, there was an issue with my kids' daycare, nothing to do with their care. They were totally safe, but we had um, just like a really shocking, angry, aggressive response from um, people in power there uh, to just a small issue that I raised, really, or I thought it was small. Anyway, um, so we've just had to pull them out and find somewhere else for them to go. They only go a couple of days a week, but just this kind of shock of it <laughs> has kind of um, stressed me out this week. And I think, I, you know, I know that's not the point of um, the quilting channel here, but um, I think some of that did uh, kind of transfer over into the quilt. Um, I think I've talked before about how I can be kind of stubborn with this stuff. Like, you know, I've started so I'll finish kind of thing. And I think in this instance, I probably shouldn't have. <laughs> so I've learned a few lessons, which frankly, I thought I'd learned before. Um, but I'll go through them anyways. <laughs> uh, I guess you have to go through a few seasons of this maybe as a quilter before it really sinks in. Um, those of you who've been doing it longer can let me know. Um, so I think I, you know, I have this, I don't want to waste things kind of mentality. And that includes time. I don't want to waste my time. So because I had started piecing this quilt, I didn't want to just stop. This is why I don't normally have this problem of having quilt tops that aren't quilted. Because once I've done the quilt top, I just like, well, we've put that time in. Let's just put a little bit more in and get it finished. But in this instance, I think I should have waited and stopped because it was the quilting that killed it. <laughs> so I'll show you a bit of... Um, the process that I went through to make the quilt. I started with a group of, I don't know how many, like a, between five and eight sort of um, blocks that they were from, they were called B blocks. They were from like a prompt from a quilt group I was in that I'm not in anymore. So I'm not gonna get any more prompts. So I'm not gonna make this big sampler quilt, but they were kind of color coordinated. And then my husband cleared out his cupboard and gave me a whole bunch of jeans. And so I was like, yeah, that, those, those kind of go nice together. I like to I like to mix denim and quilting cotton. I've done a couple quilts like that. So I cut up all the jeans, and I was going to do kind of a similar process to what I did for my Ruby Star Modern Scrap Quilt, which was um, basically not measuring, just cutting rectangles, squares, and putting everything together into like random panels so the orphan blocks would be kind of scattered. And I started doing that. And for some reason, I just wasn't feeling it. I wasn't liking it. So I was unpicking seams. I was unpicking seams for a like, quick and easy orphan block quilt. It was ridiculous. Um, and so I stretched the blocks. I stretched the denim for no reason. <laughs> and then I ended up with a layout with like, I also made extra blocks from the scraps in order because I was wanting to use up the scraps and stuff. Meanwhile, just like really just not feeling it. So the, one of the... I'll continue on with, with where I got to with the quilt, but one of the lessons that I think I really need to like just drum into myself is like, this is a hobby that's supposed to be fun. Um, my dad, um, who's passed on, but he used to have this rule he would um, kind of throw out there for pretty much every situation, <laughs> which was the 80-20 the rule. Um, now he applied it to like um, business or effort or something, like you need to find the 20% of the effort that gets you 80% of the results. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about in quilting, I feel like it should be, you know, 80% fun, 20% unpicking stress challenge, you know? I feel like that's a good mix and that's what I need to aim for. So if I'm feeling like the quilt I'm working for on, sorry, is 80% doing my head in, why am I doing it? just do something else <laughs> like there's no need no one's paying me for it. this isn't custom no one's paying me for this I don't sell my quilt you know like there was it was just like this stubborn 
obstinacy I have to kind of finish stuff sometimes. And then it was coupled with kind of, I guess, as the week went on and this incident happened with the daycare, like anger and frustration and just like it all went into the quilt. <laughs> so, um, so anyways, I got to the, the quilt top and okay, it was a bit stretched, but I probably could have still made it look all right. Um, but I rushed the basting, so I probably didn't base close enough together. Um, and then I decided I wanted to do something kind of wild and quick. <laughs> the quilting, it wasn't quick. Um, so I thought I would use like a combination of different stitches. So I started with like zigzag and I kind of liked how that looked. Um, and then I tried like an embroidery stitch and I didn't like that. So instead of just leaving that and moving on, because like I'd already spent so much time on it and I was going to do random quilting anyway, I unpicked it. So I was sitting there unpicking quilting lines <laughs> on an orphan block quilt that I didn't really like that much that I'm not even going to gift to anybody. There's no deadline. There was no nothing. Anyway, um, and then I decided, oh, to speed things up, why don't I try doing free motion zigzags? So I dropped the feed dogs and uh, started doing that. It was fine. It did speed it up a little bit, but I didn't have a plan. So some areas of the quilt I labored over and like went over stitch lines and made patterns in empty spaces and others I just did random lines. And I guess I thought that if I did enough of it <laughs> in enough different colors <laughs> that it would start to look intentional. Like I had kind of in my head like a graffiti thing almost like because like the quilt blocks went when I saw the quilt top, I thought, mm, that's kind of like, it reminds me a bit of a tattoo parlor window or something like that, a really bright one. But anyway, <laughs> um, so I thought, well, maybe I'll, yeah, make it edgy or something. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I used a whole bunch of 12 weight um, thread. I must have got them in a pack, I think, for Christmas or something. From um, It was like bright colors, and some of them were the colors that were in the quilt. So I, I hadn't used them for anything. So I decided to tease them for this. So I was sort of switching threads. I was pulling the threads up, um, you know, as you do in free motion, because I was starting in, in some places in the middle of the quilt, thinking that that would mean I didn't have to bury threads at the end. But I think I, it's something to do with when the thread gets cut um, on my machine, it knotted it in the back. So there was still a, like, thread hanging out in the back anyway. Um, so the back's a mess. Uh, also, because I didn't fully baste it in the way I should have, um, there were puckers. And at one point, when I was quilting this, when I was still thinking I'm going to make something nice out of this, um, because I was using the zigzag, I thought the best way to, to sort of fix the puckers was to cut them open and then fold the top over the, like the loose top over the the other raw edge and then zigzag along so and where I did that I don't think it looked super strange that was fine but it was time consuming and I think the more quilting I did with the with no plan with no nothing the more I hated it <laughs> so um, near the end I I set myself a kind of a deadline like I'm gonna quilt until I can't remember midnight or whatever it was um, and then I'm not doing any more so I stopped cutting open the puckers and I just zigzagged the hell out of them <laughs> and, and uh which means there's a pucker on the back as well right you know so anyways it looks terrible um I was watching um so like I put I put tv and stuff on when I'm quilting and so I was watching on like uh you know binge watching that's what you call it binge watching project runway <laughs> so, so I'm seeing these people make these amazing things in like 11 hours and I'm like right I'm just gonna set myself a deadline don't do that <laughs> Um, anyways, uh, so the other lesson I th I'm thinking that I need to kind of drum into my head is like, if you're not feeling it, don't quilt it. Don't sew it. Just put it away. There's, you know, again, I've said, I've said a, a couple of times about this, that like when I started quilting, I didn't understand whips and UFOs. I didn't understand what, well, whips I understand, which is just a work in progress, but UFOs I didn't totally understand. I was like, why would you have all this stuff? unquilted and finished and whatever. Now I get it. <laughs> it's part of the kind of creative process. Um, and 
like quilting, there's like a, if you kind of remember your economics from school, like there's an opportunity cost to what you spend your time on. So if you spend your time sewing and quilting something that you're not feeling, you're not liking, it's not turning out, then there's something else that you might have enjoyed better or might have looked better that you could have been working on. So I need to kind of drum that into myself. I don't need to just keep finishing something and if I'm going to I need to just make it simple like I could have done straight lines on this I should have done straight lines on this it would have looked better it would have been done quicker um I don't know so anyways sometimes I get so far and I don't know how to stop or when to stop so for this one once I'd finished all my ridiculous quilting I still didn't like it so I was like that's it it's not getting any more of my time um so I trimmed off the excess batting backing and all that it is not a square I didn't spend any time squaring it up that usually takes me ages <laughs> um and then instead of I was gonna bind it and I just just was like no I don't want to spend time doing that so I zigzagged all around the edge like just sealed it up basically I think I went over two or three times all the way around it and that's it um so I don't love it don't know what I'm gonna do with it cats can sit on it my potty training son can sit on it I don't know <laughs> um and I'm not I don't you know I'm not kind of saying this to have you guys go oh it's not that bad or whatever like um there are bits of it in it ideas in it that I don't hate um and if I experimented on a smaller scale and then tried it or if I've been willing to slow down and think about it and spend a bit more time on it it might have turned out better you know even with this idea with the zigzags and stuff but I just lost my patience with it and I was sort of channeling anger and frustration <laughs> into it and stuff and you can tell um so yeah so I, I do think this is definitely def like even compared to the first quilts I ever made this is this is the worst one uh I have ever made um anyway I guess oh I'm not feeling terrible about it it's done I'm glad I didn't spend the time finding it now um and you know not everything we make can be our favorite right so that's fine um but I thought I would share that story with you instead of just not showing it to you um because I know that on some of my other videos um I talk about kind of doing stuff without a plan without measuring without a pattern and all that kind of stuff and sometimes that does work out it does I really like like I kind of oscillate between that and like the really precise foundation paper piece and kind of stuff um and doing stuff without a plan can work out when you kind of in that zone you're sort of in this sort of creative flow and it's fun and you're enjoying it and you're not stressing about it you can make something really cool that way but if you've got no plan and you don't love it <laughs> and you're just pushing yourself to finish it for no reason it might not work out so just be aware that there might be times when you know you're in the middle of something and sometimes like this I'm talking to myself when I'm talking to you here right but like the, there's times when I just need to go I'm putting that away until I'm ready to do something with it and clearly that's what all these quilters with all these quilt tops in their cupboard that's what they've chosen to do they're smart about it they know they spend all that time on the quilt top and there's no point rushing the end stage um, so I need to teach myself that um, again I thought I, I really felt like this was a lesson I'd learned last year but I guess not <laughs> so um, because it was last January when I had made this other quilt top which I talked about in the whips video that um, I started quilting and I was like no I hate this I'm not gonna quilt it anymore so I didn't even go as far with this <clears throat> with this quilt as I did with the other one <clears throat> um, and then I cut it off and I showed it to you in the whips video so it's this one with the scrappy squares and the and the borders on two sides but not the other side where I cut it off anyway um, I'm showing you this because this is the better solution uh, somebody messaged me on YouTube or uh, commented and um, was giving me a suggestion for something I could do with this um, and then they, at the end of their comment they said and if you don't want to do it you can send it to me and I will so we've been in touch <laughs> and her name is um, Sandy from LTD Quilting in Nebraska and I am going she's a long armor um, but she had some ideas to do with like appliquing and stuff on this anyway I am not inspired by this 
and I do not want to end up making another <laughs> hideous quilt like I made with this orphan block one. So I am sending this to her in the post. She is not long arming me for uh, long arming me for me. I'm not paying her. She's not sending it back. I'm giving it to her, and she can do whatever she wants with it. Um, she said she sent me a photo, so hopefully I can show you what she's done with it. I'm excited to see. Um, and I'm excited that somebody else wants it and they want to do something with it. I, you know, uh, I hope, Sandy, that you won't judge me on um, any of my seams. This was a year ago. I've gotten a bit better. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to send that to the, off in the post to her this week. Um, and, yeah, I think that's a brilliant solution to this um, UFO, frankly. Uh, and then the other whips that I am still feeling good about is the farmer's wife quilt. Um, I just really needed to take it out of the box, I think, and see how much was done and kind of go, yeah, I do want to keep going with this. And it is something that I'm happy for it to be a slow project. So I have put the blocks up on my design wall. Somebody commented and recommended I do that. And I was like, no, there's papers on the back. I can't put them up. It wouldn't work. They won't stick. And so I've just pinned them up. I don't know why I didn't think of that first. But anyway, and it's definitely... Um, well, I mean, it's a nice decoration for the room <laughs> and it's also keeping me aware of the colors and it's helping me go, oh yeah, I could make another block, which frankly is what I should have done the week I was working on the hideous orphan block quilt. But anyway, so I've made another seven blocks since the whips video. I can't remember how many I'd actually done when I made the, the video about the farmer's wife quilt process that I go through when I'm doing the blocks. Um, but anyway, so I'm a third of the way through that one because there's 99 blocks in the book uh, and there's 33 and I, and I, yeah, I'm having to, I still stubbornly say I want to do all 99, but I also probably need to um, check in with myself as I go along and go, if I'm getting sick of this and done with it, maybe I just make it up with however many there are. But right now I'm, I'm liking it again. So, um, and part of that's probably you guys encouraging me with it. So thank you. The weight loss quilt is also still going fine. Um, I've got about a row's worth of blocks to catch up on, but I've got them recorded and they're going to go quick <laughs> because although I ate pretty healthy this week, I didn't do a whole lot of exercise because I was stressing about this issue with the kids and working on this ridiculous quilt. Um, I still have lost weight this week and the week before, maybe stress related this week. I don't know. Anyways, but I will have another um, update on that quilt in another week or two, probably. Um, so I'm hoping to have <laughs> um, another video for you next week that's um, not me moaning about stuff. <laughs> so um, I hope you've enjoyed um, hearing about my mistakes this week. And if you like videos like this, then please um, do subscribe, leave me a comment, hit the bell for notifications, and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for spending time with me.